Hey guys, how's it going? It's me Fermian here and today I wanted to talk a little bit about Armored Core 6, the fires of Rubicon. So I want to preface this by saying that I'm a newcomer to the series and as my first AC game I have to say that I'm very much pleased with uh, how it has been so far. Granted, I've only played for about four hours, so it's really not that much, but the experience that I had in these four hours has been just amazing. Arguably the best that I had this year, up there with uh, Final Fantasy 16. These two have been like my uh, favorite games so far, at least for this year. And I want to say that Armored Core 6 has been kind of a breath of fresh air, in a sense that I'm very much used to the old From Software formula of Dark Souls style games. And you know what? I like it. If they bring out a new one every year, I'm gonna play it, straight up. But it just felt nice seeing something completely different from a studio that's mostly famous for one style of game that they make. Now, I want to start off by talking about probably my favorite thing in this game, customization. So, I was blown away at first. When I saw that I have so many options to not only customize the look of my mech, but also the way it plays, I kind of didn't expect that, you know? It's like, it was a very, very deep experience in a way. So let me talk about this uh, in a more detail way, because it's going to make more sense, prom I promise you. So you start off the game by having like a rifle kind of thing and a sword, pretty much. Also some like uh, rockets on your shoulder, which is pretty badass. But anyway, the point is, as soon as you finish that first mission, you're gonna be thrown into like a garage and you're gonna have so many different uh, types of weapons there that you can get like a sniper rifle a plasma cannon eventually rocket launchers an even bigger sword shield and it's like oh my god which is the best option and in these four hours that i was playing i've come to the conclusion that there really isn't a very very best option in general so what i'm talking about is the fact that there are a lot of very good ones and it depends on like the mission that you're playing sometimes you're gonna want mobility actually so far i feel like i've always preferred the mobility option but i can see cases where the tank legs for example are going to be very useful by the way so far my favorite option has been the tetrapod i think that shit slaps straight up at least i really enjoy the whole hovering mechanic uh if i have options like that i will now i'll go for it it just feels nice to rain down some bees from the air on unsuspected, uh, unsuspecting victims, I should say. But as I was saying, there really isn't a straight up best option from what I see. And I really have no doubt in my mind that it's gonna continue being this way because this is from software we're talking about, right? It's like, I know they're not gonna make an amazing early game experience and mess up the end of it. Okay, maybe they did that with Dark Souls, uh, <laughs> now that I think about it. But I'm pretty sure that I'm still going to keep on enjoying this game. So I did look at some reviews out of curiosity. And it's kind of uh, confirmed, the way I'm feeling about it. That it's going to just keep getting better and better. And it's very refreshing to see that, you know. Which brings me to my next point. And I want to talk about the, again, the customization, but about something uh, less important, but still something that people are gonna love the hell out of it. So I'm sure you guys have seen already like a bunch of uh, pictures and memes and such on the internet with people making custom decals and very, very special uh, Mac builds in the sense that uh, they are painted in certain ways. Like I've seen Macs with like the USA flag, I've seen mechs with uh, the McDonald's team, you know, the red and the yellow. I'm sure you guys have seen that too. It's pretty much everywhere. And I really like that you get this all in a... How should I say? You don't have to pay microtransactions to unlock all of these customization options. Which is something kind of unheard of nowadays, you know? Where you play a game and it's like, oh, by the way, you can unlock more color options for $5 or whatever. And it's like, oh my god, I don't want to pay for that. Why, why do you make me pay for customization? And meanwhile, here you're getting that for free. Like, you know, that's actually very good. So it's 
very much like a Baldur's Gate situation for me, where it's like, even if I'm not gonna play the game, I bought it just to support the devs, because I love the practices that they bring to the table. And same here. Even, even if I wasn't gonna, like, play the game, I just want to support the devs. That being said, the game is awesome, so good job from software. And again, I really like that it's not predatory with microtransactions, it doesn't have a battle pass, it doesn't have like pre-order bonuses. Actually, I think they did have it, but if I'm not wrong, you can unlock it in the game regardless. So, you know, it's fine. And overall, I want to say that uh, another thing, the difficulty. So uh, I'm sorry that I'm talking about this uh, Soul 8. It just popped into my mind. Uh, that I have to talk about this too. Uh, so far I haven't really been challenged too much. I did hear that there's apparently like a spider boss which is going to be very difficult. So I'm looking forward to that. I might make a video about it as well, out of curiosity. But uh, so far it wasn't really that difficult except for the tutorial boss, the AC helicopter. Like that guy was a motherfucker. <laughs> I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. Uh, to be fair, I feel like the biggest challenge was getting used to the way the game plays and to all of the controls that it has. So, I wasn't really expecting to use terrain that much because my brain is pretty much uh, wired to Dark Souls. It took a bit of uh, time getting used to the fact that actually there are more options than just dodging and trying to evade. And that is something that I'm gonna have to get used to more and more. But so far it's been good. Uh, like I said, I did uh, all of the training missions, and I did... Uh, what was the last mission that I did? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I had to climb like a wall with some guy, and then he left at the middle of the fight. And it was like, this big juggernaut, I guess was the name of the boss, I'm not really sure. But that was the last one I did. I'm very curious to see how it's gonna be with the following bosses. But again, so far it's been relatively easy, but I'm just curious to see how uh, the end game bosses are gonna turn out, because usually From Software always nails those the best. I mean, Nameless King, Theralon, Melania, uh, more not Morgoth, what's his name? Uh, man, it's escaping. Moog. Yes, I want to say Moog. Like, these are all end game bosses and they are freaking amazing. And I have a feeling that this game is gonna have them too. Maybe it's the spider one, I'm not really sure. But in any case, I can safely say that I've had an amazing experience with this game, even though I've only played it for a few hours. You can definitely expect me to play it more, and I'm gonna make more videos on it. And I think I'm gonna make like a full-on uh, proper review of it too, at some point. But until then, take care guys, I'll see you soon, and I'm gonna go on and uh, play some more Armored Core. So, once again, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Take care.